Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for being here today. My previous video was my hair care inventory for 2023. So literally just going through, counting it, telling you the numbers. Today's video, I am going through and selecting which products I want to use up this year, why I'm picking those products. If you watch my plan to pan in 2023 video, I was talking far more about makeup in that video, but I think one of the things that I want to do is try and make sure that probably not within this year, but by the end of next year, I have no products that were not bought in the 2020s in any of my inventories. You know, time is just passing so quickly. Products are getting so old without me actually realizing. So the age of the products is definitely something that is playing on my mind. Probably not quite as relevant for hair care. Still will have a sort of use by, like generally it's sort of 12 months, 24 months, 36 months on the bottles and whatever, but I don't think you'll really tend to notice it and you're not kind of putting it like on your skin in a way that might cause a rash or a reaction or something. So it's maybe slightly less relevant for hair care, but ultimately I would like my hair care inventory. And I do think this should be possible, probably not within ne this year, but within the next two years to be very much under control, like something comes in, it gets used until it goes out and then I buy a replacement. I'm not particularly excited about hair care products, they just, they're quite utilitarian for me, they do a job. I feel like it's maybe not quite as relevant for hair care in terms of the age of things, but still just don't want things living on eternally in my collection. I do want to be aware of the ages of things and making the effort to move them out. This is my second inventory count, so I've done my perfume inventory, now doing hair care so I've not done skincare or makeup yet so I don't know what my overall totals will be for opening 2023 with but I do know I want to do a sort of values based usage goal this year so I will also set something specifically for hair care I think at the end of the video but for now let's get on into going through those categories and picking which products I want to try and concentrate on in 2023. Starting with pre-shampoo products, I've got three of these worth $49.13. I think I can use all three of these this year, so I'm going to keep them all down, keep access to them all, and hopefully finish them all by this time next year. On to my shampoos, I've got 10, and my average shampoos that I can use in a year is four and a quarter. Looking at my inventory, I've got four of these that were added in 2022, which are actually these four here that are handily all next to each other. So the Living Proof, the Olaplex and the Way. So taking them out of the equation, these are the older ones in my collection. Let's get them into a line. Now this I had in the shower last year. I was actually hoping this might make it into my, my empties last year. I feel like it doesn't look like it, but there is... It's a clear shampoo, so it's kind of difficult to see, but can you kind of see it moving there? So there is some product left in this, so I definitely would like to finish that one this year. In terms of setting a value-based usage goal this year, the most expensive one in my collection is this Kerastase. So I will try and finish that. There's quite a lot of that. There's about 80% of that left, so that's a fairly full one. I think, although it says four, obviously... They've not all been four full sized every year. Um, so I think I'll keep those two. I'll maybe take this one as well. This is one of the older ones, Briogeo Scalp Revival. So I'll put that in as my third. And then that leaves me with these guys to choose from. And I've kept the Olaplex free shampoo treatment in. So I think I'll keep the Olaplex shampoo down as well. So if I aim to finish those four this year, I'd be really happy with that. I have finished four and a quarter, so I could maybe keep another one just to keep access to it. Which one though? That's the question. So I'm kind of thinking, like, I'm hoping to actually finish that this month, so having that out by the end of January. Then this is full size, so that'll probably take me quite a while. So if that took me up to summer, and then that took me through, like, maybe, like, August into September then I would have that one for Alaska. I would quite like that, actually. I don't think I'll be able to finish another full one, but I suppose I really should concentrate on the older ones here. In terms of the values of these, which is what I would like for my empties this year, this Davines one is worth $36. The L'Oreal one's obviously a much more affordable one, worth $3.99, and the Purology is worth $28.99. Makes sense, then, to pick as the other one to keep in rotation just in case I do actually manage to finish it. So I will keep those five shampoos down this year and 
put these five away. So I have seven conditioners and I feel like I just basically need to let the shampoos be the guide there. So straight away I've got three matching conditioners that match a different shampoo. I've got the Kerastase, the Davines and the Olaplex. So that leaves me these two shampoos, the Volume 1 and the Briogeo 1. Um, and these four conditioners. Now I have got the shampoo for these two and I've put them both aside so I feel like I want to keep these and use them with those shampoos. I've then got the Kiehl's Olive Conditioner and the John Frieda Full Repair Conditioner. Now this is what I've actually been using for the last little while with that shampoo so um, although this is a massive thing I don't think there's that much left in it so I think what's left there would probably do the washings that I'm doing with these two shampoos and I do want to factor some hair masks in as well so I'm not necessarily aiming to finish all of these conditioners because I do want to use some of my masks but that just gives me a conditioner to use with each of these however this one from Kiehl's is very very heavy a little too heavy for my hair so I think what I'll do is actually keep this down and I'll actually use this for shaving with so I'll use it instead of a shaving foam so it should last a good little while but I feel like I'm never going to actually knock that out as a conditioner because I feel like every time I use it I have to use it so sparingly and I do use it almost more as a treatment when I do use it so I'm never going to finish that as a hair conditioner so I feel like I will keep it down keep access to it in the shower but using it for shaving rather than actually for hair. On to masks I have nine and most of these are fairly new so the oldest one that I've got a date next to is this one this was from 2016 so I'll try and finish that this year and then this one was from 2020 this is just slightly different in that this is a dry mask so you just spray this on to dry hair brush it through and go to bed so although it is a hair mask not a hair mask in the sense that these are that they're all for using on wet hair so I'm going to keep that down as well so that leaves me with these guys now I've kept my Olaplex pre-treatment shampoo and conditioner down so I feel like it makes sense to keep one of the Olaplexes. I'm going to stand these up and see if I've used one of them. I feel like I did. I feel like I did one hair wash. I feel like my hair wash before London I did the full Olaplex on so wait and I'll see if one of these has a little bit out of it. And then Lauren got me this for my birthday last year and it's kind of like the sort of beauty pie answer to Olaplex. So I think what I'll do is I'll keep one of the Olaplexes down and keep this because I've got quite a good chunk out of this used so I feel like I can finish that this year. And I've also been using this, the JVN Moisture Mask, so I'll keep that. Just realised I could just check which of these Olaplex masks is sealed and which isn't, so this is the unsealed one. So I have added the unsealed Olaplex to that lineup. I'm actually really keen to try this. So this is just a little sample from Olaplex again, but this is their moisture mask. The number three is like their strengthening mask. Quite excited to give this a go. So I think I'll just, for the sake of 20 mils, I'll keep that one down as well. And I'm going to put these three away. For colour products, I only have one. It's my beloved Davines Alchemic Conditioner in the copper shade. So definitely keeping access to that. And we'll probably finish that this year as well. But if I finish this, I would repurchase it. I would replace it. So this won't really change now after this. I will keep this specific one down to finish this year. On to heat protectants. I have six worth $150.79. The most expensive one and also the oldest one is this one from Kerastase. So this is their Nectar Thermique. And I have spoken about this before, but I am so much more likely to use something that I can spray into my hair. I will kind of actively avoid using like balmy, creamy products. Unsurprisingly, this has languished in my collection, but I'm gonna try and finish it this year. I think I might actually put it in my project pan just to sort of force me to use it up. But this is worth $43, so it's by far the most expensive of my heat protection items. So I'm going to try and finish that one up. I'm going to keep access to this which is my dry bar hot toddy. So this is a heat protectant that you can use on dry hair. And quite often I am styling my hair on dry hair. I tend to wash my hair on a Thursday night and I don't really bother styling it. I just, if I blow dry it, I blow dry it. Sometimes I just let it air dry. So it's usually actually like Saturday before I'm properly curling it or whatever. And then I've kept the Davines shampoo and conditioner down. It's kind of over there in at the back if you can see. So I may as well also keep this down so that if I 
ever finish this I can move on to that and I will put these three away and try and concentrate. I'm not so bothered about finishing this, it's quite an individual product so again if I finish that I would repurchase it but if I can try and finish particularly this one I would really like that knocked out. I've just had that for so long now I don't even want to think about when that came into my collection. If I manage to finish that one I'll move on to using that one. For conditioner slash detangling sprays I've got three. This one I got in 2022, this came in a Liberty box so that one's out of the running and this one I don't have a date beside. I can't remember when this came into my collection. I bought this when I was in Florida in 2015 so I know when I got that and it's pretty old but out of the two that one is the more expensive one so that's the one that I'm going to keep down since I am going to go for a value based goal of some sort this year so I will keep that one down and try and finish that up this year. For hair oils I've got three. Now this one came in a Liberty box in 2022 so it's my newest one. I bought that when I went to New York in 2018. This one I don't remember when it came into my collection. It's worth $23, this one's worth $36 so this is the more expensive one. But this one is 100 mils and this one is 50 mils. This is 15 mils and I had this in my 12 pans of Christmas last year. Three months use, you can see, did not even take me, that's maybe like half that bottle. So I'm not using very much per month. I'm not really sure that I'd be able to finish either of these within the year, but I'm closer to being able to finish this one at 50 mil than this one at 100 mil. So my thought process here is that I will keep access to this one. I'll possibly put this in my project pan because I feel like just for reference it would be really good to measure how long this actually takes me to use 50 mils of hair oil. And if I finish this this year that would be great. And if I don't I'll have made a really good dent into it. And then next year when I'm doing a quantity based goal again I'll hopefully have used so much of this this year that even if I don't finish it I'll finish it early next year and I'll also be able to knock that one out next year which would leave me with just one and it would be the biggest one and the most expensive one but that would be fine because there would only be one left in my collection at that point so that's my logic there so I'm going to keep this one down this year. For serums slash treatment products I have got five. I used the shampoo and conditioner of this up last year and really enjoyed them so I'm going to keep that down. I feel like as well it's just really good to have like a sort of strengthening product in the lineup. So I'm going to keep this one down. And then similar to the Olaplex mask that I'm keen to try, I got this sample of the Olaplex serum. So again because it is only a sample size I feel like I'll be able to finish that up. So I'm going to keep that down this year as well. So those are going to be my two treatment products that I keep down. And I'm going to put these three away. Onto blow dry balm products. Now this is a category I am not a massive fan of. As I said about the Kerastas Nectar Thermique. Anything I need to put on my hands, run through my hair. I'm just going to shy away from using. I'd always rather use a spray. As you can kind of see, I did purchase this from r Co. It's the Park Avenue Blowout Balm. Um, but everything else here is something that I've got as a gift with purchase or a set. You can kind of guess that from the fact they're all sort of deluxe sample sized or travel sized or whatever. So this isn't a category that I actively choose to add to. But it is the one that is probably the most out of control within my hair care inventory because it's the one I moved through the slowest as well as being the biggest on its own to start with. Of these 11 products, three of them are actually like air dry balms rather than blow dry balms. Possibly I should actually separate these into their own category now that I've got three of them. I only ever had one so this kind of felt like where it belonged as such. But of the air dry products, so this is the oldest one, the Redken No Blow Dry. So I'm going to keep that one down and I will keep, I've got two of these JVN Complete Air Dry Creams. I've not opened either of them but I'll keep one down so that when I finish this I've got that if I'm not blow drying my hair and I want to run something through it. Then as far as the rest of them go I'll keep that Olaplex number 6 down. So I got this when I got the Olaplex set for Christmas last year as in 2021 Christmas. I feel like as well I've kept quite a few Olaplex products down. It might be quite nice to have this and just do a full Olaplex routine a couple of times. Keep that one down. Then this was actually in my 12 pans of Christmas project pan. So I've got good usage in that one. There's not much left. So I'm going to keep that down because I think I can finish it. And this one I've also used a few times, the Virtue one. So I'm going to keep that down. Um, so that if I could finish those five, that would leave me with six in this category. Probably still more than I want, but I think I do need to be realistic about the fact I don't love using these products. So it's not something... Although, to be fair, they're mini, so I suppose I could try and go for one per quarter. So we could add one more in. Let's go for one more. So I don't have dates beside many of these. 
so I'm not sure when most of them actually came into my collection. Out of what's left, so this is the most expensive one, other than this obviously, which is a full size product, but I know I'm not going to finish a full size product and all those minis. So I've got the full size one, but this is quite big, so again I don't think I'd finish that, I think it would need to be one of these three because that's the other air dry cream now none of these have a date beside them so i don't know which is the oldest but the aveda one is the most expensive being worth nine dollars in comparison to the other two this one's worth three dollars this one's worth eight dollars so if we're going for a values based goal that's what i need to prioritize and you know even the extra dollar could help so four blow dry balms and then two air dry creams i would love it if i'd finished all of these by the end of the year i don't know if it's realistic or not but i would love it if it happened i have got one volume blow dry spray and i am going to keep it down this year i really really like this this is the category the reason i've got one left in this category is because this is a category that I go through, it's a product that I use. However, as much as I'm keeping that down to keep access to it, I have got three tins of mousse and yeah, I feel like this is something I'm, again, quite similar to the blow dry balm, it's something I need to put on my hands, run through my hair, so I'm so much more likely to use the spray. But that's why I have three of these and one of that. So don't have a date beside any of these. They're all probably ages with one another. And the most expensive one is the Davines mousse, which is worth $27. So that's the one I'm going to keep down and try and use up this year. And I will put the other two away. We've done all the washing products and all the wet hair products. But on to dry hair products. So first of all, I've got one dry shampoo, one dry conditioner keeping them both down they do two separate jobs happy to have them both down and again though if i finish either of these i would be replacing them in my collection so this category is probably not ever going to come down any further but i'm quite happy with where it is texture sprays i've got two and i think i'm just going to keep them both down i don't know if i'll finish the two of them this year but i feel like i'll definitely finish one and i can't be bothered putting the other one up the loft and having to go up and get it and whatever so I'll just keep the two of them down and then that way for when I finish the first one, there's a second one at like easy access. For my six miscellaneous styling products, I'm just going to keep them all down. None of them are anything that I use all that often, but when I want them, they're the one product I have that does that thing. So I'm just going to keep access to them all on hand. And the last category that I've got is hairspray. I've got two of these. This Davines one is actually very, very nearly done. I'm just going to keep the two of them down because I know that Davines one is going to be done probably within the first quarter of the year so I may as well keep the Philip Kingsley down to have access to it. So at the end of the count, I'm really sorry my voice and my throat is just absolutely gone so I'm really sorry that I probably sounded incredibly irritating in my last few videos but if I need to make videos I need to make them with the voice that I've got at the time I'm making them so unfortunately right now it's a very croaky nasally stuffed up kind of voice but I am very pleased that this is my box of stuff that will be going up the loft so in past years I have had this box plus a second box in the loft so the fact that this year we are now down to only one box of stuff going into the loft is a huge improvement Obviously, in the long run, I would like to be at a point where I have no boxes of backup stuff in the loft, but for now, I'll take having one box instead of two as a win. So that stuff can all go into storage. Then this is the box that I'm going to keep on my windowsill. So in here, we've got one hairspray, one texture spray, one dry conditioner. That's my dry bar hot toddy, so my heat protection spray for dry hair. One texture spray, blow dry spray, dry hair mask, heat protectant balm thing. Balm for when I am not blow drying my hair. A balm product for when I am blow drying my hair. Dry shampoo, hair oil detangling spray and the Red Ken Extreme Treatment. So that is what I'm keeping access to on my windowsill this year. Then this is the box of hair stuff that lives in my wardrobe. So that's where I put all the backups of like the miscellaneous styling products that I am not going to need daily access to so it can kind of go away but I don't want it up in the loft because I do want the access. And then just backups of things, you know, like the other like the other blow dry bams are there, my other texture spray, etc. So that when the stuff that is here is hopefully being worked through and finished, the replacements to be pulled in are relatively easy access in the wardrobe. So what I've done actually, because the Olaplex shampoo and conditioner in this kit are the 100 mils. I feel that's the best thing I've got for when I go, I'm going away for two weeks, I'm going to Canada and Alaska. What I've done is I've just put all of these Olaplex things, so that's the number six blow dry balm, 
um, the number 8 moisture mask and the number 9 serum all in this box. I'm going to put this box in here so I feel like if I want to give myself a sort of full Olaplex treatment I've got all the stuff together I can just take this box out of the wardrobe and you know use those products if I want to take them on a random week but I also it keeps them all together for when I go away that I've got those slightly smaller sized products in comparison to taking you know like full size shampoos and conditioners away. Again in the long run I would quite like not to even have a box in the wardrobe I would like to literally just have this collection of stuff that is in use on my windowsill and as stuff gets finished up go out and repurchase one replacement but for now we've got a box of stuff in the wardrobe and that's what's in it. Then in terms of what's here, my Davines mask, I'm going to put that into the bathroom. Then shampoo, this is the one that is so nearly finished so I'm going to put that into the bathroom. I said I would use this Kiehl's conditioner mode as a body product so I'm going to put that into the bathroom. With that shampoo I'm going to put in the John Frieda full repair conditioner which leaves me this collection of stuff here. I definitely find having one of a thing in the bathroom means I'll concentrate on using it rather than rotating through. I'll take out the Espa pink hair and scalp mask as my pre-shampoo treatment that I'll keep in rotation at the moment and that leaves me with these three hair masks. This is a strengthening one and these are more conditioning ones. I feel like I've got so little of this used and it is a mini and I don't want it to kick about for ages so I think I will put this one, the JVN Deep Moisture Mask, into the shower because I think there's maybe like one to two uses maximum. The focus in this camera is driving me up the wall. So yeah, like one to two uses maximum left in that realistically. So I will put that one into the shower. I feel like maybe that's enough to get on with just now. As much as the strengthening mask kind of does a different job, I'll just keep those things in the shower just now and once I've finished the JVN mask and that pre-shampoo treatment, I'll maybe then move the next two masks in and try and finish one of them before moving in the next pre-shampoo treatment. So yeah, that's what's going to go live in the bathroom. And then these things can go into the box in the wardrobe. So there we have it, that is, that's going in the bathroom, that's going in the windowsill, that's accessible storage in the wardrobe and that's the stuff that's going up the loft. You've seen the products that I have pulled out and what I want to try and concentrate on. Ideally, I would love to be finishing every single one of those products that I have kept downstairs this year and not put up in the loft, but whether that's realistic or not, I don't quite know, but definitely should get through the majority of them, fingers crossed. I had a really good year for hair care last year. I finished way above average in terms of my items, but what I'm not 100% sure on and what I will probably have a slightly clearer idea of at the end of this year is whether I did really well last year. I finished I think 52 items, seven of them were sashes so 45 full, um, well they might have been like deluxe samples but 45 kind of proper items that weren't sashes whereas my average use, wait I'll just get the figures up and tell you. For hair care in 2019 I used 23 items, 2020 it was 22 items, in 2021 it was 29 items, 51 items sorry, in 2022 that I used. So I used 51 items, um, which is significantly more than I've used any other year. And what I don't know is if I used so much more because I had used just about enough every other year that it kind of worked out that I had a lot to finish naturally this year. And like maybe this year, I'll do a lot of the work on products but they won't maybe actually be finished until 2024 or even 2025 if that kind of pattern is going to go like three years of quite low, a big year of high and then back to low or if the reason that last year was higher was because my hair care inventory is so much closer to being under control than any other inventory that I've got so there's maybe just less for me to be rotating around I'm maybe actually just more likely to be concentrating seeing products through to their ends rather than having you know eight things that I'm using for a month each I've now got you know two things that can be used for six months straight of each year and still get equal use out of both so I don't know it'll be interesting to see what I do manage at the end of this year so my average usage and quantity over the last four years for hair care has been 31 and a quarter items but obviously that has been hugely brought up after last year's 52 items and my average value has been $392.34. I'm not setting a quantity goal this year but my overall goal will be value based 
and my 2023 opening value for hair care is $1,407. Now my average use is 300 and something dollars, that's in a different tab, so I've just had to move off of it. Um, so basically, I would love for hair care to end this year with my value being under a thousand dollars for my entire hair care inventory. So that would be using essentially $408 worth of stuff to get me to 999. I have said like I do want to be rotating more this year, but I think that's far more relevant to my makeup collection and my colour products than it really is my hair care products so I feel fairly confident because I have as you've just watched I have picked out things and I've taken the values into account because I knew that was going to be my main goal for this year so I'm fairly confident that I could hit that goal off the top of my head the Kerastase shampoo and conditioner that I've picked out they're worth the best part of $50 each so if I finish the two of them that's nearly a hundred dollars straight away. I am hopeful that getting it under a thousand dollars by the end of the year should be doable. So fingers crossed that's what my big aim for hair care is going to be this year is to use stuff up and to take the overall total value of my hair care inventory to under a thousand dollars. So that is everything for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!